Hey, 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 happy Monday. Tonight, I am going to unbox and take a first look at both Dungeon Craft Volume 1, as well as, ah, let me grab it, <laughs> Hell and High Water. Both of these are from 1985 Games. So I will jump into that in just a bit. So come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com, which I happen to be the founder and editor-in-chief. So tonight is Monday, April 6, 2020. This is episode 465 of The Daily Dope. If this is the first time you've tuned in to check out the show, let me just point out, this is very, very casual. Normally, we talk about tabletop gaming news, but with the way things are going right now with the uh, coronavirus pandemic, not a whole lot of gaming news really to discuss. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're just kind of hanging out, having a good time, jumping into uh, doing, some, doing some unboxings, first looks, doing some page throughs, doing some reviews as well actually doing some game plays as well so a little bit different but regardless of what we're up to it is always casual like a casual friday every day anyway do want to mention that uh if you like the video give it a thumbs up fight those trolls out there of course subscribe to the channel if you do don't forget ring that little bell because it will not only notify you of when the daily dope streams live Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube. It'll also tell you when I upload my standalone videos as well. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. All right, so welcome aboard. I see the madman is hanging out in chat. Because this is a live stream, chat is available on YouTube. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay, but I do pay attention to chat. So, or at least as best I can, some things, just things fly under my radar on chat. And then when I'm, when I'm catching the show, making sure it rendered okay, then I'll be like, wow, when did they ask that question in chat? It's <laughs> <was> like, what? <laughs> Missed that completely. Flame Huron is in chat as well. So, uh, so Flaming Huron's mentioning getting earlier and earlier for them to get out of bed to watch. I know it's, uh, I'm not changing the time. It's seven o'clock central here in the Midwest of the United States of America. Uh, anyway, I uh, do want to point out just uh, chime in if you want to say howdy, or maybe you've got a question or comment. Maybe as we're taking a look at these two releases from 1985 Games, you want me to take a closer peek at something? By all means, please chime in. Yes, Flaming Heron's talking about Daylight Savings. Yes, I know. Spring forward, fall back. I used to live in Arizona, and Arizona is uh, one of two locations. There's like a small sliver of Indiana. But uh, out in Arizona, they never change the clocks. There is no daylight savings time, which was kind of bizarre. So it never moved the clocks, but then you'd have to sit there and be like, okay, so wait a second. So Chicago is now two hours ahead of me, not an hour ahead of me. So anyway, as I mentioned, today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of dragon, I shouldn't say dragon, dungeon craft releases from 1985 games before i jump into that I do want to point out there's still news popping up on the gaminggang.com i am trying to share as much news about like free pc games free role-playing games free print on demand or print and play so there were uh quite a few news pieces well i should say three 
news pieces today all about freebies that you may want to check out. One is a PC game on Steam. One is regarding six print and play games from Asmodee. And there's a role-playing game that you can uh, snag a copy of for free. It's uh, Maze Rats, which is from uh, uh, Ben. Isn't it Ben Hilton? I think it is, or Ben Watson. I forget forget his, his last name. All right, Sportsman Z has popped in to chat as well. So we got chat off and running for our Monday night. Anywho, let's jump on in because I am going to be taking a look at Dungeon Crap Volume 1 and Hell and High Water. Both of these are from 1985 games. They're illustrated by Travis Kozabu. Taking a guess on that last name pronunciation. Uh, with an assist from Jordan Kozabu. These are the first two releases in the Dungeon Craft line, as far as I know. I believe these are the only two that are out right now. Each of these does carry an MSRP of $30. Play me here, it's like, it's raining freebies. That's always good. Yeah, I, I swear we are in our 17th day of uh, sheltering in place here in Illinois. So, uh, wow. And it, we're going to be doing it all through this month, I'm sure. So let's swing on over to the other camera. We're going to take a look at the first in the releases. We're going to take a look at Dungeon Craft here. So this is pretty hefty. Even though it's uh, it's not real thick, it is pretty hefty. So let's take a look at the back here. It says, over 1,000 game pieces to propel your campaign. Dungeon Craft allows you to easily create an entire world. All the tools you need to build sprawling dungeons, living forests, bustling towns, and anything else you can imagine. Just cut out the pieces you need and start playing. I sort of have an impression this might be a book. That you actually take the pages out of the book. I don't think it's just a bunch of, like, punch board sheets. Because for one, it's, it says we just need to cut them out. So, uh, Flaming Heron's wondering who's going to go stir crazy first. Well, I have to admit, I am not all that, um, not all that bored, to be honest. I mean, I got a lot of stuff that keep, keeps me occupied. So, uh, I've been watching episodes of Doctor Who at night. I've been trying to, you know, kind of crank through, uh, a, a full adventure every evening. Right now, I'm on some, uh, John Pertwee episodes. Tonight is Colony in Space which uh, I saw that a long, long time ago. So I don't remember a whole lot of it. I remember the special effects are a little goofy, but I seem to recall it's a pretty good adventure. But anyway, and of course, uh, I'm working on my Call of Cthulhu campaign that we're going to be sharing. Uh, we're going to shoot video for that. So uh, yeah, so uh, but, yeah, keeping occupied, reading, playing some PC games, stuff like that. So let's dive on in here. So let's take a look at Dungeon Craft. Pop this open. So how to use it? Cut out pieces. Okay, I get that. Note, cut the dashed or dotted lines. Do not cut the solid black lines. Don't cut the solid black lines. Simply place the piece on the map and play. This book works with dry and wet erase markers. So, is it a book? No, not really. I wouldn't consider this to be a book. Okay, so... Let's see what we got on the back here. Oh, it's basically just saying, uh, hey, thanks for your support. So, the company is out of Portland, Oregon. Okay. All right. And I've got my hobby knife. So it looks like we actually have some monsters too. So we got a dragon here. So let's see if we can slide in here. There we go. That should get that open for us. So Sportsman Z mentions working from home definitely beats going into the office. That's for sure. Uh, Elliot Miller, my best friend. He has worked from home for quite a few years now. 
about eight, I want to say. So, all right, so we've got... This looks like this is, uh, this is like the rooftop, right? And then that is the inside of this. So I would take a guess that what we're looking here, well, it says cut on the dotted lines, not the straight lines. But when you think you'd want to cut this area here, take the gray off, right? So let's see, we're going to just flip through these, right? We're in no hurry. So let's see what we got here. It's another rooftop. And this looks like that is uh, kind of a church with an altar. Or temple, what have you. Another rooftop. That is a uh, tavern. <laughs> yes. All right. And this looks like uh, another inn room. Well, this might be like the dorm. Could be like a dormitory or could be uh, bedrooms of an inn. Although I wouldn't expect to have, you know, somebody sitting there. So, all right. What do we got here? Uh, so that's uh, we got a, got a uh, bear rug there and suit of armor. Okay, so here we're starting to see where we got the dotted line. So these are crates you could cut out, barrels you can cut out. We also have the, uh, looks like another room or another kind of like living space. Kind of give me an idea. This is a, uh, the 32 millimeter miniature, which I'm not done painting. So, but uh, as you can see, Fits very nicely in scale here. Yeah, I'm just sitting on the table, yes. All right. It's like we've got looks almost like some gargoyles. Statues. It's like these are statues. Uh, scorpions. And another, uh, like... Now, this looks like a uh, kitchen here. Got some bed rolls. And we get a couple more buildings there. Got some ladders. Can't really tell what that's supposed to be. Not positive. Maybe lights? Okay, so we got planks kind of sticking together here. So we've got tables with food. It's like these are stairs, like stairs up and down. It's like a bridge. So we got a wooden bridge, stone bridge. These are these are pretty nice. I like the uh, the art style. The art style is pretty cool. Looks like these are these are columns. Uh, chest. Oh, okay. So now we've got uh, a cart. Another statue. We've got some pools. So we got a. A narrow bridge. We got more, another wooden and uh, stone bridge. And here we've got, uh, it's a rope bridge. Missing some planks, broken planks. Some pools. Ah, we got a ship. Boat. Looks like it's a boat. Some horses. There are a lot of these. <laughs> There's... Loads and loads of these. All right, now we're going to get into the forest. So we've got trees. And like a log. Not sure what that's supposed to be. So we've got different foliage. Is that a, supposed to be a crater? Nah, it looks too even to be a crater. It's like a little pond. <laughs> like a vortex. Some lava. 
rocks. Uh, I'm going to take a guess. These are supposed to be barrels of oil. Right, so we've got uh, a bit of a... I wouldn't say that's a river. I'd say that's more of like a creek. Oh, we got some lava flow here. That's nice. Uh, some mossy rocks. And just regular rocks. This looks like uh, a thick, overgrown forest here. Some tree stumps. These look like these are supposed to be like evergreens here. Evergreens with snow. So we got some tents. And we got some tents on fire. <laughs> Some more rocks, some more trees. Like uh, dragon eggs almost. Like a dragon egg nest. Or I should say nest with dragon eggs. You know, fire. And we've got a campfire that's not lit or burnt out. Bigger tents. So we got a pentagram there almost. Bigger tent on fire. So guess if you got a tent, you gotta have the tent on fire as well. So we got a lot of a lot of trees. And of course, you can kind of tell if you can see there's a little bit of a like glare. Uh you should be able to use uh, dry erase markers on this easily enough. And I would take a guess you can probably utilize these as well with like Pathfinder flip mats, the various different maps that they have as well. All right. Whoa! Dazzling! Okay. Looks like we've got uh, almost like Cliff face, rock face there. Ah. Got the caverns or cave entrances. Are these supposed to be like brambles? I don't know. Okay. So we got more stairs. More tree sections, more water sections, and lava sections as well. Got uh, some different rock outcroppings. It's kind of cool. I like that. All right, so we got a, an empty room. So now it looks like we're going to start getting into like dungeon areas here. Well, like this is a, a dice there. Hmm. Not sure what that's supposed to be. I mean, granted, raised surface, but uh, a couple more rooms like this. I got a pentagram. Oh, there's a treasure. We're rich. Got some chests. Got some open chests. It's like uh, some piles of bones there. Kind of the same thing once again. Oh, big treasure room. Kind of spreads we're not. Okay, I was gonna say, are these supposed to be the doors? So I was going to say, I would expect to see uh, some doors that we cut it, cut out and pop out. Hey, Viper Dave has popped into chat. Good to see you, Viper Dave. Right, so we've got uh, a bunch of s skeletons there. Empty rooms. Storage areas. This looks like that might be like a... Uh, trap a hallway trap maybe a sarcophagus maybe that's what that's supposed to be got some ladders yeah there we 
go. It is a sarcophagus. Now we got a bunch of sarcophagi. And empty area there. So we got a bunch of sarcophagi. Got uh, some cages with animals in them. Some empty cages here. Big columns. All right, so then we got some uh, some monsters here. Let's see what we got as far as the monsters. So it looks like we've got some orcs, got some wolves, got skeletons. There's different skeletons here. And looks like we've got oh, those look bigger than goblins. I think these are still supposed to be maybe they're supposed to be orcs. Hyenas, zombies. It's like these are some heroes. Some heroes mixed in through here or villains. Uh, then these look like they're pretty standard here. It's like maybe some magical weapons. What's up? So we have them both on grass, as well as kind of on stone. So, not sure what that's supposed to be. <laughs> it's kind of like, hey, you can see right through it. It's like a werewolf. Big lizard creature there. Some horses as well. Some mounted troops. Dragon. You know, so you have a little more visual pop against the grass than they do against kind of the stone. Then this is the last one. So we have, uh, so I guess these are supposed to be like nightmares. All right. So that is what we've got inside Dungeon Craft Volume 1. Now we're going to take a look at what we get in Hell and High Water, which kind of has uh, a hellscape and uh, sea theme. All right, come on, get in there. The uh, pretty good, pretty good weight to pretty good weight to the. Uh, card stock here and it does have as I mentioned before it's got that finish to it so should hold up to play pretty easily of course you're probably going to want to use a hobby knife and a straight edge to cut stuff out so this is hell and high water so we've got seafaring and hellscape map pieces so it says it works with wet and dry erase markers so it says over 880 game pieces to battle the high seas or take on hell. Dungeon Craft Hell and High Water allows you to easily build sea encounters for your favorite tabletop RPGs or take your players to a hellscape to fight evil fiends. Do you want to point out these pieces would work really nicely too with skirmish level miniature games. So keep that in mind too. This book uh, allows you to take control of your own ships, travel to hell, Battle sea monsters and ancient demons. Just cut out the pieces you need and start playing. Okay, so let's get the shrink wrap off of this one and we'll dive in. Both of these releases came out last year. So they're both uh, copyright 2019. So once again, it's just saying cut out the pieces Cut on the dash or dotted lines. Don't cut the solid black lines. It gives you a little information about 1985 games. Let's see what we got. Come on, hobby knife. There we go. So I'd say this is a relatively small ship here. 
So once again, got the cardstock, got the finish to it. Let's make sure that everything is in focus here. So we've got some debris, floating debris. <laughs> Ships on fire. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty much on fire there. Uh, is this like sunken? This looks like that might be sunken. Yeah, but there, there's still barrels in that, so barrels wouldn't really sink. Ah, all right, so now we're going to have a bigger ship because we've got the uh, Ballista here. Looks like we've got some monsters. Yeah, some flying winged monsters. More smaller boats, dinghies. This looks like a raft made out of, like... A turtle shell, some seaweed. Oh, this is more, uh, this was uh, like rowing benches here. So we get into the middle part of the ship. So this is actually a much bigger ship. Once again, there's our 32 millimeter scale. So looks like this, we've got uh, some shells, some coral. Seaweed. Yeah, this has got to be submerged. This has got to be underwater stuff. Okay. And then we have the rear of the ship. So this is more that this is a warship because now we've got... Uh, it's like siege weapons on the back. Catapults. A couple of catapults. And then this is just if this was just a, probably a, kind of like a cargo ship. Oh. A couple more bows. And on fire. Got a stern, another bow. This is a, kind of a swashbuckler character here. A few of those. And more ships on fire. We got that. So we got another stern and bow. Tentacles coming out of the sea. Unleash the Kraken. So we got some, some more characters. Looks like a pretty big character here. Hanging on to uh, some, some debris. So I guess this is all one piece like so. We got some explosions. So here we have uh, submerged with a skeleton instead of the uh, person hanging on to the flotsam, the wreckage. Hey, another uh, homemade like rafts made out, made out of planks of wood in a door. That's straight from Titanic. Look at that. It's kind of vortex here. More explosions. have to admit, they're giving you quite a few different options as far as how you want to build your your ships. Uh, the man meant to the sinking boats and boat fires definitely bring back some memories of the U.S. Coast Guard. Jeez. I can only imagine. So we've got some rock outcroppings. Some vegetation growing on those as well. So this looks like we've got a much bigger ship here. Uh, some more pirates right here. Looks like a little bit kind of an island almost with a little uh, little hut. I think that looks like that might be a hut here. And then a wooden bridge. And then just a an, uh, rock outcropping there. Bigger vortex, more characters. Kind of, uh, I'm a little surprised that there are these little these islands or whatever little outcroppings, pretty small. I would have thought maybe you just have this as a piece to cut out and then have like a bigger island area. I don't know. All right, now we got a little smaller 
boat. Got some docks. <laughs> Smash docks. And, of course, burning ships. Okay, looks like we have some more dock areas here. And busted up dock areas there. A big vortex. Big explosion. I gotta admit, I think these are pretty cool. I think there's a little too much duplication on some of these, though. So... I mean, like, I, I mean, you know, granted, you're, especially people who are, are playing with miniatures and building their dungeons and, and areas and things like that as they're playing. Uh, yeah, I understand you're probably gonna need a lot of dock area, but it does just kind of seem a little redundant. Uh, just like we have like a, a lot of different vortexes of various sizes. It's like, okay, that's cool. But we need all the vortexes though. So we've got those. Got a uh, big pile of gold. <laughs> a bunch of a bunch, bunch of skeletons. It's like skeletons and cages. We got some submerged chests. Some open chests that were submerged. There we go. Sunken ships. Here we go. All right. Now we have some undersea life. It's kind of cool. And uh, looks like we've got some monsters here. And more of these sunken ships and boats. There we go. We got some more sea life. It's kind of cool. I like that. Then we got some uh, kind of bizarre looking sharks. It's like so. That's kind of cool, the giant clam. I like the giant clam there. All right, we got some more little islands. We should be getting close to uh, the hellscape. So this is a scratch across here. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, now this looks like this is a ghost ship. That's what it kind of looks like to me. And then we also have some more, uh, almost like, these look almost like Atlanteans here. It's, it's Namor, the Submariner. And here's the other half of the ghost ship. And we have, uh, I don't know, Stone Minotaur. And harpies. Some more pirates there. A uh, bizarre kind of like uh, turtle monster. That's kind of cool. It's like, yeah, come on, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on, buddy. Okay. Just different color scheme here. Uh, a couple more giant clams, more sharks, some more of these monsters, uh, some different creatures here, humanoid creatures. It's like uh, more pirates, schools of fish. All right, now we go to the hellscape. So we've got, uh, this looks like a rooftop, and that is some sort of oh there's there's doors there some sort of uh area some building all right we've got some devastated area here some ruins some more ruins looks like we've got some almost like these are imps there you go stand out a little little better on that background like uh some undead oh uh, maybe not These look like these are kind of like almost like ogres so you can get them green tinted or you know flesh colored caucasian flesh colored 
Looks like these are uh, kind of bridges again or walkways. Got some flying creature here. Oh, we got some more rocks, got some more ruins, some barrels. Uh, looks like uh, that kind of looks like that's supposed to be something that's fallen. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess kind of. I guess this is supposed to be kind of a wall here. So this is, I guess, an upper area, almost like uh, might be for kind of an upper area for like a guard tower or something like that. So Flaming Heron says, I suppose, for those people who want markers for those specific things, I don't know. I'm just a generic marker sort of guy. I, mean, I gotta admit, some of this stuff's kind of cool. Um, what I would probably think, I mean, this is just me, right? I mean, whoop. The fine folks over at 1985 Games were kind enough to send these along for me to take a look at. Uh, I would I would have thought they would have foregone these these tokens, these monster tokens, creature tokens, and stuff like that, and just kind of focused on the uh, the actual you know like cut out map pieces as opposed to uh, including monsters, because you figure, well, you already got a bunch of minis, which not everybody's got a bunch of miniatures. I understand that. But, um, so, and plus, some of these are like, what are these? <laughs> it's like, I don't know what that is. What is that thing? What's that? What is that guy? Looks, uh, looks like, uh, just, you know, a guy with a helmet on. But it's all like the same. I don't know. I don't know what they're supposed to be. So we got some kind of cool, almost like, uh, like bleeding trees or trees that have like veins. These are like black and dead trees. Now that's kind of cool. I like that. Okay. See, this is why this is kind of what I'm talking about. I mean, do we need two of these in the set? I mean, I gotta be honest for 30 bucks for each of these sets. I think it's a pretty good value, especially if you think about what you normally would pay for like a flip mat or a flip map, say from Paizo. So I think uh, I think you're getting a lot for your money. But I mean, do we need two of these? I don't think so. All right. So we've got uh, that's kind of cool. I like that. So it's supposed to be the. The skull of some monster. Looks like this is kind of the spine of the monster as well. Some sort of large creature. Oh, there you go. Now it's splashed with gore. <laughs> uh, we got some demons, some monsters here. Yeah, looks like we got various different demons. And a couple of different color schemes for you. Oh, there we go. Looks like we've got the ribs of some monster. And another creature. And we get the same splash with gore. Uh, looks like, uh, almost like... Kind of like f flames, flaming smoke, almost. I don't think so. I think maybe it's supposed to be like a... Kind of like a lava cropping or something like that. Yeah, we can see that's lava there. That's pretty apparent with that. Okay, so we got a bunch of skulls. Then we got a river of lava. More of those trees, those tree things. Got some treasure. More pools of lava. Same here. And more kind of rivers of lava. There you go. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yep, there you go. Anakin Skywalker. Obi-Wan fighting it out right there. So it looks like we've got uh, some 
skeletal creatures here. And a uh, Y of lava. So it looks like uh, it's almost like a strange sort of vampirish creature. Like that might be just a kind of a, a character. And of course we got the different color scheme there. Ah, some infernal machines. There you go. So you can kind of engage your your Mad Max fetish there. So we've got a really large one, some smaller ones. It's like these look like motorcycles. I think they are. I think they're supposed to be motorcycles there. Oh, okay. So we got uh, kind of a bridge made of bones. Yeah, it's some sort of a, like lava monster here. That's, that's neat. I like that. And sort of a, an area above the lava. This is possibly another kind of like a guard post sort of sort of area there. Same with these two as well. Some more treasure. Like uh, some areas here above the lava. So you can kind of almost stone path. All right, then we got the final card here. So we've got uh, all this hellscape stuff as well as high seas related map pieces in hell and high water. Let's put all these back. Like I said, uh, I'm kind of surprised that there's like the top down monster tokens, creature tokens in that, uh, and some duplication, but still, I mean, we saw there's a lot in these two and each of these carries an MSRP of $30. I'll zoom out a little bit. So we get get all of that in there. So there we have uh, volume one of Dungeon Craft, as well as Hell and High Water, which is, I'm guessing, volume two here of Dungeon Craft as well. So uh, these are pretty cool. I, I have to admit. Uh, like I said, even with uh, I'm just you know, a little bit of a critique, say I'm kind of surprised with some of the duplication and using the uh, the top down tokens. All in all, these still look pretty cool. You are getting quite a lot for your $30, especially if you think about some of the stuff you could you would download on Drive Through RPG as far as dungeon tiles and that. They tend to be pretty pricey. All right, let's move on over to the other camera. So, I had a package arrive earlier today, so I want to share what we're going to be diving into tomorrow as well as uh what I've got ahead on Wednesday and Thursday. So today I received, uh, for the war gamers out there, you'll be very happy to know, Old School Tactical Volume 3 arrived. Oh yeah. So not only did the newest volume of Old School Tactical, which is the Pacific, pretty cool. That showed up today. Also got some other goodies to go with it. So we've got some game mats so got these we've got some other little mat areas so it looks like we've got four in this little package so i'm guessing that we're probably looking at japanese army german army russian army and the marines the u.s marines that's what i'm going to take a guess at so i also got hellbent the expansion for Old School Tactical Volume 3 as well. So we are going to dive into all of this wargaming goodness 
on tomorrow's show. So if you are a war gamer uh, or uh, interested in seeing some World War II uh, tactical level war gaming, be sure to tune in and check it out. Also on Wednesday show, Wednesday and Thursday. So we played around with the exit game uh, two weeks ago. It's like, wow, it's like, when was this? How many, how many weeks? What, what's going on now? So, and I had fun. I had fun playing the exit game, even though, you know, it was for novices. But yeah, we broke that up over a couple of days. So Cosmos was kind enough to send me some of their new adventure games series. So we are going to dive into the dungeon on Wednesday. We're going to play. This is supposed to be broken up. It's an adventure broken up into three chapters. It's almost kind of like create your own adventure, choose your own adventure, I should say. So it's supposed to be broken up into three adventures of about 90 minutes each. I don't know if we'll necessarily be doing 90 minutes per chapter, but uh, I think we'll dive in. We'll play it. Play it Wednesday and Thursday. And if if need be, we'll wrap it up on Monday. So that is what I've got cooking. Let's see what's going on in chat here. So, uh, so Flaming Aaron's still talking about being a generic marker sort of sort of person because they're just kind of lazy and use a whiteboard when they're making maps uh whiteboards are what i usually will hand out to the players so that they can map along if i'm doing a fantasy game if i'm doing call of cthulhu they usually have handouts speaking of call of cthulhu things are looking good couldn't uh connect to the fantasy grounds and i was like what the hell's going on here and then i had to look and i had to make some changes to my router and blah, blah, blah. So now it looks like we should be good. Elliot uh, rolled up his character. So he's got that character all set up. And uh, I just have to uh, put together Cameron and Lexi's characters and hoping to maybe play Saturday. So if we play on Saturday, I'll have the video up Saturday night. So, uh, and I'm kind of... Uh, Kind of putting this together, it's going to be kind of cool. Kind of cool uh, Call of Cthulhu game. But it, it is an old, old, old classic adventure that I'm sending them off on. I know Elliot won't remember it. And I know for a fact Cameron and Lexi have not played it. So have some fun with that too. So uh, the Mad Men says that they use the old Chessex mats. Still work for everything that they need. Uh, Fleming Heron says they thought you had it too easy. Not sure who they would be. Total dungeon crawler thing for whiteboards. Yes. Yeah, because, I mean, even... I don't... Granted, I don't run a lot of fantasy role-playing games, but when I do... It's like, I don't drink a lot of beer, but when I do, it's Dos Equis. Uh, I don't run a lot of fantasy role-playing games, but... I don't demand my players to, like, map every last little square. I don't have them bust out graph paper in that. Uh, I do prefer to just have them kind of, like, mark off rooms and kind of connect them so that uh, they know what's going on. Plus, what they tend to do is they'll, they'll, like, they always have, like, chalk and they're, like, marking, marking walls so that they know uh, how to get back out and stuff like that. So, uh, the escape room game, there you go. That's what Flaming Heron was talking about. Uh, no, I guess they liked, they liked the, the playthrough that I did. So, we're gonna take, I got two of them. I got two of these. One is for like ages six, this is for 16 and up. And then this is for ages 12 and up. So I, I assume that the content, whatever materials in here, it's, uh, I, you know, not going to be something where it's like, all of a sudden I flip a card and I'm like, whoa, whoa, got to cover that that image up. Or suddenly it's like real gruesome or something like that. All right, that is it for tonight's show. As I like to always point out, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Fight the trolls out there. Subscribe to the channel. If you do, be sure to ring that little bell because it will not only notify you when the Daily Dope streams live Monday through Thursday nights. I'll also tell you when I upload my standalone videos as well. 
Tomorrow night, as I mentioned, we're going to be looking at a bunch of old school tactical volume three stuff. So if you're interested, be sure to stop by. Of course, if you watched uh, live, I definitely appreciate you taking time out to hang out and keep me company. But of course, if you watch after the fact, I got a soft spot in my heart for you folks too. I definitely appreciate anybody who takes time out to uh, to check out the show, especially now. It's crazy days that we've got. I also do want to point out a big thank you to all those folks out there who are keeping us fed, keeping us supplied, trying to keep us healthy, fighting on the front lines to uh, to save lives in the midst of this pandemic. So a big thank you to all of them as well. All right, that is it for tonight's show. Everybody enjoy the rest of your Monday night slash Tuesday morning. As I mentioned, I will be back tomorrow night or tomorrow morning. It's depending on where you're at. And of course, until then, be smart and stay safe. Oh, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, by all means, subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel by clicking right here. And of course, if you want to catch up on past episodes of The Daily Dope, check out this playlist. And if you'd like to see what YouTube's recommending you take a peek at from the channel, just give a click right over here. Of course, I'm Jeff McAleer. And once again, thank you very much for watching.